When you want to create a website, you need to make use of a web hosting provider. They will enable you to get your own domain, create a website, create an email account, and much more. Well, I use a lot of web hosting providers, and when it comes to speed, ease of use, pricing, and support, in my opinion, SiteGround is the best web hosting provider there is. And that is why I've created an in-depth tutorial about SiteGround. Well, my name is Ferdy, and let me show you what we will cover in this tutorial. First, I will show you how to choose your own domain name, and then we will choose a web hosting plan that fits your needs. We will make our website secure, install WordPress, and talk about subdomains. I will show you how to create your custom email account, get access through webmail on your Mac or PC, or on your tablet or phone. We will make sure that all your emails are synced, so when I flag something on my phone, it's also flagged on my computer. We will talk about forwarding emails, generating an auto response when you're unavailable, and how to get rid of spam emails. I'll show you how to upgrade your hosting plan, add more domains, and install WordPress or other applications. I will also show you how to host your website at SiteGround while using an external domain. We will cover migrating your website from another web hosting company to SiteGround, and thanks to SiteGround, this is super easy to do. I will show you how to give access to your clients so you host their website and you can charge them monthly for web hosting and other services. A great way to generate an extra source of income. We will talk about speeding up your website by using caching and CDN. And of course, we'll take a look at the visitor statistics of your websites. With SiteGround, you have a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk in trying their service. And that is why I also will show you how to cancel your domain and cancel your web hosting plan. So when you follow all the steps in this tutorial, you will be able to create multiple amazing blazing fast websites for yourself or for clients without having to struggle or figure out how everything works, because I will show you how everything works. So. When you like everything you're about to see in this tutorial, please like this video and feel free to subscribe for more upcoming WordPress related tutorials. Having said that, two more practical things for you. When I go to fast for you, you can go to the settings of the YouTube video and change the playback speed to a slower one, or you can click on the left arrow on your keyboard and go back five seconds in the video. In the description of the video, I have timestamps. So if you want to go to a certain part of the video, you can click on one of the timestamps and you go directly to that part of the video. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to get started? Let's answer the questions. What is a domain name and what is web hosting? A domain name is the address of your website. So if I would go to facebook.com, facebook.com is the domain and everything you see on this website is the web hosting. Web hosting is a really fast computer that is turned on 24 seven with all the information on your website. And you can rent it for a few dollars per month. It's like having a house. If you want people to visit you, you need to give them your address and your domain name is the address of your website. So your domain name is the address of your website and everything you see over here is the web hosting. If Facebook would have no domain name, it would look something like this. And that can be quite a challenge to remember by heart. And that's why we need a domain name. And when we have a domain name, we want to display things on our website. And that's why we need web hosting. If you have that already, that's great. Then you can skip this part. If you don't have it, let's go to webhosting23.com. Hit enter. And then you can click on the link, go to SiteGround. I love SiteGround. SiteGround is in my opinion, the best web hosting provider there is. And I'm not the only one with that opinion. In a Facebook web hosting group with more than 5,000 members, SiteGround is mentioned most when it comes to the best web hosting provider. And I agree with them. I scroll down a bit and there are three plans you can choose. And the best value for your money is the Grow Big plan. And what is the difference between the Grow Big plan and the Startup plan? Here with the Grow Big plan, you can have unlimited websites. Look at this, unlimited websites. And with the startup plan, you only have one website. And all the time, people are upgrading from startup to Grow Big because they want to create more websites. So I suggest Grow Big, and you can always upgrade later if you want to. Over here, you can have unlimited websites, 20 gigabyte of web space. Well, most websites are 200 megabytes. So you can have up to 100 websites with this plan. You can have up to 100,000 visits per month. And I hope you will get that because that will mean a lot of business for you. And then if you have that, you can always upgrade to the Go Geek plan. And then you will have 40 gigabytes of web space and you can have up to 400,000 visits per month. This is the plan I have right now because I have a lot of websites and a lot of visitors. But keep in mind, you can always upgrade later. So I will start with the Grow Big plan and more great things about it is you can have free SSL. So your website will be secured with some web hosting providers that cost money. Here it is free. You have daily backups. That's amazing. If you somehow mess things up, SiteGround got you covered. You will have a backup of the day before and of the day before that. Free CDN, that means that your website will be fast throughout the whole world. No matter where the visitors come from, your website will be blazing fast. You can have unlimited free email accounts. And really important, this is great for e-commerce. And if you somehow really don't like it, you have a 30-day money back 
guarantee. So there's no risk for you. I advise everybody to go for the Grow Big plan, but for the sake of the tutorial, I will start with the startup plan and later I will upgrade to Grow Big so I can show you how to upgrade your account. So I click on get plan. Now we need to choose a domain name. If I would say facebook.com, I want to buy facebook.com. I click on proceed. Of course, it will say you've chosen an invalid domain name because it's already taken. So you need to choose a domain name that is still available. What I would advise everybody in the world to do is get your own domain name with your first name and your last name. I hope it's still available for you. And otherwise you can use a company name or a custom name. And if you offer local services, you can place your hometown in the domain. For instance, web design Maslaus. The great thing is that you can choose a lot of different extensions, .com, .net, .org. I always suggest use .com or the local one from your country. I go for best web hosting 23. So let's see if it's still available. I click on proceed. Yes, it says congratulations. Your domain is available for registration with your hosting account. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you. Now I can leave some details over here. First, my email address, jk24co at gmail.com. I need to create a password and I need to confirm my password. And then over here, I need to say from which country I am. I'm from the Netherlands. And I will fill in my details. Ferdy, Corpusuk, Ferdy, and Anna Media. If you have a company, fill in your name over here in your VAT slash tax ID. If you fill in your tax ID, you don't have to pay taxes for this order. It's okay. Great. Uh, SiteGround gives feedback at once, which is nice. I'm from this city, this street. And my zip code, if I would say it wrong, it will correct me. It will say, hey, you need to remove the space. And then over here, I need to fill in my phone number. And it's really important that it's the correct number. So say plus three, one, six, and then your phone number. Really important to have this over here, the, the country code. I scroll down and depending on where you come from, there can be local payment providers. So if I would enter this website from the Netherlands, I would see idle over here. You will maybe see PayPal. I will use credit card, so I will fill in my details. I scroll down. I use the startup plan. The data center is in USA North. That's totally fine with me. If I focus on people from Europe, I could say Europe, the Netherlands, or Spain, Madrid, or Germany. And if I focus on people in Asia, I can select this one. I choose USA. I'll pay $3 per month, and it will be built right now, plus the domain registration. And what I really highly suggest you do get the domain privacy. Why? Otherwise, all the information we just filled in will be on the streets and people can misuse that. So when you do not use domain privacy, people can see your phone number, your address, your email address, and they can start calling you like, hey, I can make a website for you, or they can send you spam emails like I can make a logo for you or optimize your website. Your inbox will be full. You don't want that. So I choose domain privacy. Then I scroll down and the total amount we have to pay is just $65.87. And then we have our own domain name and web hosting for a whole year, which is in my opinion, amazing. I confirm that I've read and agreed to the sign on terms of service and privacy policy, and I do not want to receive information about service updates and new features. When you get this through webhosting23.com, you don't pay more, but you get extra discount and I get a commission. So it's a win-win situation. And then I click on pay now. And then the great thing is that our website will be live immediately. We don't have to wait for 24 hours it will be live at once. If everything goes right, you should see this right now. And that's amazing. And then I want to congratulate you with your domain name and web hosting. If you don't see that, it can be that you see something like this. If that's the case, fill in the confirmation number you get in the text message, and then you should be able to proceed. And in some cases, uh, SiteGround will put an amount on your uh, credit card account and you need to fill in that number so they know for sure it is your credit card account. You can do that by going to your account or your credit card account or by calling your credit card company. I had to call them. I want to check everything so you know exactly what to do in every situation. I hope both of those confirmations do not appear for you, but now you know what to do when you see those two screens. So let's continue. And my account was successfully created. How great is that? I can proceed to the customer area. I log in with my details and my password. Great. So here we are. They say welcome, Ferdy. So they're really personal. And the first thing I want to do 
is verify my domain name. So it says over here, verify your domain name. If you don't do this within two weeks, your website will go offline and you don't want that. So I go to my email account and there it is. Verification required in my inbox. So what I see over here, I need to verify my domain just by clicking here. I need to check this. Everything is okay. I have verified my information and that's it. Contact information verified. So I can close this command W on Mac. I close this. So now I have verified our domain. We need to install WordPress. How can we do that? We need to go to websites over here. And there we have it. It says the setup is incomplete because we need to install WordPress on our domain name. So how do I do that? I click on finish setup. Then I select my domain name over here. I click on continue. I can start a new website or I can migrate a website. We're going to talk about migrating existing websites from different web hosting providers to SiteGround. If you want to know how to do that, take a look at the description. And there I have a timestamp that will direct you to that part of the tutorial. Right now I want to start from scratch. So I click on skip and create an empty site. There's a special offer for the site scanner. I don't need it. So I click on finish. And now our website will be created. Yes, it is created. What I need to do now, I need to go to the site tools. So I click here. Now we can install WordPress. And before we do that, we want to make our website secure. So let me show you how to make our website secure. And the great thing about everything you see over here, we've created everything itself from scratch. So it works perfectly with SiteGround itself. So what I want to do, I want to install WordPress. Before I do that, I want to make sure that our website is secure, that we have an SSL layer because that is necessary in order for you to run your website. So I go to security, SSL manager, and by default, our domain name is already encrypted. So we already have SSL, but what we need to do, we need to enforce the HTTPS. How do we do that? Over here on the three dots, I click on enforce HTTPS and I turn it on. So now HTTPS enforce for bestwebhosting23.com is enabled. Our website is secure. Let's install WordPress on our website. So in order to install WordPress, really simple. We go to WordPress. I click on install and manage. And now I need to select WordPress. Even if I want to create a webshop with WooCommerce, I always select WordPress. So also right now I select it. Then I can choose a domain. Well, right now I only have one. I can have a different language for my website. I want to have the English one. I can install this on my main folder. I can also install this on the subfolder. So bestwebhosting23.com forward slash new. We'll talk about it later. Right now I want to use the main folder and I want to create my admin info. So my username for my WordPress website will be ferdycorp. And I create a password. And I want to fill in my email address. And now when I receive any information from WordPress from my website, it will go to this email address. I don't need to install the WordPress starter and then I click on install. Awesome. So I can view the site. It looks like this right now, really ugly. This is the front end. So everybody right now that goes to bestwebhosting23.com will go to this page and we can also go to the admin panel, also known as the back end of our website. If I click over there, I go to the back end. This is what I will see when I'm logged in. And here we can create new blog posts. We can add videos, PDFs, images. We can create pages. We can change the look and feel of our website. We can add plugins so we can make our website a web shop. We can make it a social media website. There's so much we can do now. The great thing is we are live on Best Web Hosting 23 or you on your domain. And now we can build a website. Well, this is not a tutorial on how to build a website. It's a tutorial on how to work with web hosting. So if you want to learn how to create any website, search for how to make a website 30. And I have tons of tutorials, how to make a website for beginners for free in Dutch, make a website with Elementor Pro, make a news website, an e-commerce website, social media website. And then if you go to my YouTube channel 
What you'll see is I have tutorials on online courses. As I said, the news website, SureCard. So a lot of WordPress related tools. So if you want to create any website using Divi or Elementor Pro or the free version of Elementor, I have tutorials about all those tools. You can find them on my YouTube channel if you search for Freddy Korpshoek or you just go to my YouTube channel because you're watching a video from my YouTube channel right now. So I will not talk about how to configure all this, but right now we are live. We use the startup plan from SiteGround and with that you can have one domain. But it does not mean that you can have only one WordPress installation. So let me show you two ways on how to create multiple WordPress installations on your website. Right now we have the startup plan so we cannot create multiple websites, but we can create multiple websites on our current domain, on Best Web Hosting 23 in my case. How can we do that? Let me show you. If I go to WordPress install and manage again, I can select WordPress again, and now I can create a second website on the domain Best Web Hosting 23, but this time I choose a subfolder. So I can make this a test website or a new project website. If, you want to, if I just want to practice, then I do the same thing. I fill in my details that I want to use to log in into my website, create a password and fill in my email address. Then I click on install. And now look at this. I have a new website at bestwebhosting23.com forward slash new project. If I would go to the back end, so I have my current website. And if I click over here, I go to the front end. So I see this, but if I would go to this website, it looks exactly the same. But now I go to the back end, appearance, themes, and I select 2021. I activate it and I go to the website. Now you can see there are two different websites, bestwebhosting23.com forward slash new project. And if I go to bestwebhosting23.com, I see this. And right now I can create hundreds of websites at bestwebhosting23.com forward slash and then you can name it anything you want. There's another way and that is using a subdomain. So I can go to domain, subdomains, I can say app or courses or members dot bestwebhosting23.com. I click on create. Now subdomain members dot bestwebhosting23 is created and I can install an application. But what I prefer is go to WordPress, install and manage. I can select WordPress and now I can select members at bestwebhosting23.com. So again, I can fill in those details over here, my email address. Uncheck this and I click on install. So now again, if I view the site, I see the website on members.bestwebhosting23.com and the website is still secure. So you can have a website like this in your main domain name or like this new project or with a subdomain. So three ways to install a WordPress website on your domain name. If you're having a business or an organization, Having an email account is really important. I get emails from people from their business and then it's a Gmail account. And I'm like, should I take this serious? So it's really important to have a domain name that starts with info at and then your domain name. So let me show you how to create one using SiteGround. I can open everything over here. I can also close it. So I like to close things. Otherwise it can become quite overwhelming. So I want to talk about emails. If I go to email accounts, I can create an email account for my new domain name. If you have a company, it's called Best Web Hosting 23. It looks better uh, when you have something like info at bestwebhosting23.com instead of webhosting23 at gmail.com. So I want to create a new account. It's called info at bestwebhosting23.com and I create a password. And voila, I click here and now I've created an email account. That's how easy it is. And there are multiple ways on how we can access this. There's a really easy way over here. I have my email account and I can have unlimited. So that's great. I can click over here, log into the webmail. So you have webmail. So through webmail, you can get access from anywhere in the world and you can use this to send emails. So if I would click on compose, 
I send an email from this email address to info at verdicorpushoek.com and say, hey, this is a test. Test. I click on send. And I go to my email account. There it is. From info at bestwebhosting23.com. Hey, this is a test. Well, if you want to start using this service or this web platform, what I would do, I would go to the settings, to the preferences or identities. Then I click here. The display name will be 30 best web hosting 23. And I can have the company name 30 BV. And set it as default and I can have a signature kind regards 30 corpus hook best web hosting 23.com. Save it. And now when I compose an email to info to info at 30 and then I see it over here so I can select it. I can say, hey, hey, if I send it this time. It's not from info at bestwebhosting23.com, but it's from 30 best web hosting 23. And over here, I see the signature. So that's what you can do using webmail, but there are also better ways. I showed you how to send and receive emails through webmail, but there are different ways. You can also have emails on your phone or on your computer. So let me show you how to use this for Mac mail, for instance, and it works the same with Microsoft Outlook. In order to use your email account on a client like MacMail or Outlook, we can click on the three dots over here at email accounts. And over here we have our email accounts. I click over here and I click on mail configuration. I can select the mail client or I can do it manual. I prefer manual. So my username is info at webhosting23.com. So now I go to MacMail. Then over here I go to mail accounts. I want to go for an other account, mail account. My email address, it's this one. So what I can say over here is, um, let's call this best web hosting 23. And of course I need to have the password, the password I created for my email. So not for my SciCount account, but just for my email account. Well, I know that by heart. I click on sign in and now I need to use my email address also as my username. Definitely use IMAP. What does it mean? Uh, it means that your email client, in this case Mac or your phone or whatever you use, will fetch all the information from the server. When I delete something on my client over here, it will also be deleted from my server. So everything is synced with each other. And that's what I prefer about iMac. Then my incoming mail server, by the way, maybe you don't understand it yet. I will show you step by step what I mean. Uh, so we choose IMAP, then the incoming mail server is mail dot web, best web hosting, blah, blah, blah. Here the same. So outgoing is this exactly the same as the incoming one. So I paste it and I paste it and then I click on sign in. I don't want to, to um, sync my notes, only mail. So I click on done. Great. Now I can close this and let's go back to the Mac mail. So I click over here, the, the webmail, I mean, sorry. So there's no email. So what I will do, I'll send an email to myself. Info at bestwebhosting23.com. I say mail from web mail. I send it. So now it's here in my inbox and at the same time, is here in my inbox. So if I take a look at my new account, best web posting 23, it's over here. Right now I read it. So if I refresh this, I also read it over here because everything is synced. So I select my email. What I can do now, I can mark it as flagged. And now it's red. Now if I go to my Mac mail, it's also red. So everything is synced with each other. If I would go to the send emails, I see those three over here. If I go to Mac mail and then all send, 
best web hosting to three. There they are. So that's great. Everything is synced with each other. So when I decide over here in my inbox, this email, I don't want it to reflect anymore. And I want to remove it. It will also be removed over here. And this is what I love because it keeps everything in sync. So what I can do, I can receive an email on my phone. And then when I reply and I go to my send emails, it will also be this, the email I've sent from my phone will also be seen over here. So everything is in sync. And that brings me to the next thing. So we have webmail and we have emails on our computer. Now let's take a look on how to configure this for your phone. So what I will do, I will go to my settings and I scroll down. I go to mail over here. Then I click on accounts and I want to add a new account. Click on other and add a mail account. Okay, now I go back to those settings here. Mail configuration, manual settings, I need those settings. So my name, let's call this one best web hosting 23 again. Then the email will be info at best web hosting 23.com. Now I need to fill in my password and my description, which is for me only for my reference. So I call this one best web hosting. 23. I click on next. I want to have IMAP again. And then I see that some information already is filled in. My host name will be mail.bestwebhosting23.com. I copy this and I paste it here at the outgoing mail server. And when I need to fill in my username, I just copy this one, paste it and paste it. And over here, my password, I can fill this in. Probably you hear my daughter again. Everything is fine. My wife's with her. So I filled in my name, my email, my description, my incoming mail server with username and password and my outgoing mail server name with username and same password. So all those passwords all those are the same. I click on next and let me see if I go to my screen over here. I have no messages. So let's create a message really quick. Send it to info at best web hosting. Test from Mac. I send it. So there it is. So now if I click on next, I should see that email popping up in my inbox. So I click on next. Everything seems to be working. I want to sync my emails. Okay. Now I go to my mail. Now I can reply. I can mark it. I can remove it. And whatever I do on my phone, it will sync automatically here in the Mac mail software and on my web mail. So sometimes I get a message. I just want to reply really quick. Like, okay, thank you. I'm not interested. And when I do that, that same email will appear over here that I've sent that from my phone. So everything is in sync now. And I really like that. I close this. So I click on new to info at best web hosting 23.com. There it is. I say mail from phone. I click on send. There it is. And there it is. So now I can receive and send emails from my phone. I can reply over here. I can mark them and then they will also be marked on my phone. Everything is in sync. So I can close this now and this works like charm. Sometimes I get an email. I just want to do a quick reply like, hey, I'm not interested. And I don't have to go to my computer. I just can do it from my phone. When I do it on my phone, and I go to my Mac mail account and I go to send. I will also see that same email I sent from my phone over here. So everything is in sync. 
it can be that you have multiple email accounts and you want to have one big email account that will receive all your emails. Well, in that case, we can use email forwarders. I have two different email accounts. And when people send an email to the second email account, I will make sure it goes to my main email account. So I have one big email account that receives all my emails. We can do that using forwarding. Let me show you how we can do that. So let's talk about email forwarders. What does it mean? Right now I'm at my website, ferdykorpsuk.nl, which is the Dutch domain name. And when people send an email to info at ferdykorpsuk.nl, I want to forward it to info at ferdykorpsuk.com. So what I could do, I could say all the emails that go to info at ferdykorpsuk.nl will go to info at ferdykorpsuk.com. Well, guess what? I already did that. And if I scroll down, it says all the emails that go to info at ferdykorpsuk.nl will be forwarded to info at ferdykorpsuk.com. That's all you can do over here. It's really simple. So if I send an email from info at that's web hosting 23 to info at ferdykorpsuk.nl to .nl and I send it, you see, it appears in my inbox of info at ferdicorpusuk.com. I send it to info at ferdicorpusuk.nl, but it appeared in my .com area mailbox. So that's what you can do with forwarders. Sometimes we are not available. We don't want to check our email for a while. Maybe you're on vacation or you're, there's something else going on. Well, in that case, we can use auto response. So when people send an email, you can automatically let SiteGround say, hey, I'm not here. I will be back this and this date. So uh, be patient. Let me show you how to configure that. Then there's auto responder. All the emails that go to info at ferdykorpsuk will get a, a message. Thank you for reaching out. I send it as a plain text. I can say, hey, thank you for reaching out. Currently, I am on vacation in the Bahamas because I charge all my clients too much money. Now I can live like this. Cheers, Ferdy. And of course, you can say, I will be back the first of January 2037. And then I can say when it starts. So if I know I go on vacation or I'm I'm not available, I can select the date from this day on 12 o'clock until 36 or this date I am unavailable. I can also say wait 24 hours before sending an autoresponder to the same address. That means if somebody sends me an email and I respond automatically, like, hi, I'm not there, and they send another email within 24 hours, they do not get the same email from me again. So you know what? Let's try this. I go back to my other account. So the title will be, I will be back. I'll be back on the 1st of Jan 1st of January 2023. Oh, sorry. That's uh, the start date. It starts right now and it ends that day. So I create this. So now it's active. So I send an email to info at bestwebhosting23.com. How are you? Blah, blah, blah. I will receive a message from info at bestwebhosting23.com saying, hey, I'm not available. So I send a message and one minute later, I get the message. Hey, thank you for reaching out currently. I'm on vacation in the Bahamas, blah, blah, blah. I will be back the 1st of January. So that's what you can do when it comes to auto responding. You can put it all on automatic pilots over here. What I really don't like about having an email address is all the spam you can get. With SiteGround, you can get rid of spam using spam filters. Let me show you how we can do that. Okay, this is so powerful. Look at this. I get a lot of spam. 
Uh, there's a reason for that. I can explain it to you, but I will not. I have no control over those emails I get. And if you take a look today, one, two, or one, two, three, four. Yesterday, one, two, three, four, five. Every day. I don't want that because I want to have a clean inbox. I want to have uh, rest in my head. So if I get all those emails every day, I don't want that. So what I can do, I can say, hey, I will block this receiver, but I'm it's, I, I send it from my own email account. So I cannot do that because then I will block all the emails I will get from myself. And there are a lot. So what I can do, I can grab the subject line, copy it, and I'm on my other account again, ferdicorpsuk.com. So I go to email, filters. And then I can go to domain level filters and I select my domain, ferdicorpsuk.com. The filter name is contact us spam. And then I can say if any of the following conditions are met. And then I can say the subject line equals this new contact us entry. What should be done with those emails that will come in? Well, I will discard that message and I can do multiple things. I can redirect to email. So I can send it back to someone else. And uh, at this moment I say, if any, I can also say if all, so I can click on the plus from I can change that to body. So if somewhere in the body of that email, it says send from copy, paste it here. So if one of those two applies, the, the email will be discarded. I click on create. So now, when a new email comes in, it will not be accepted. It will be discarded. So in that way, I can create my custom spam filters. One of the things I love about SiteGround is the support. There's a great support area with a lot of documentation, but also there's also live chat. So you can have a chat session with them and you can even call with them. Well, I don't have a lot of trouble with SiteGround, but when I have, I think in the last five years, I had six, seven times I had something. They are so good in helping you. They do not only say you need to do this and this and this, but they often say, let me do it for you. And then they fix the problem. Well, let me show you how to get in touch with the support of SiteGround. So let's talk about support. Support is really important. If you really get stuck, you can get help. I have to be honest. I use SiteGround since 2017. I think I opened the chat session like six times. And six times they help me really quick. Right now, there's no problem. I, I almost never have a problem. That's also, I think, the goal of uh, a great web hosting provider. Just not to get in the way. It all needs to be really flexible and working. But sometimes, sometimes you can get stuck. Well, what you can do then, you can click over here and go to, to the chat. And I have to be honest, I understand uh, the chat is a little bit hidden. Why uh, people tend to go to the chat really easily before searching on the internet how to fix something. But if you really want to go to the chat, you click on the question mark, you go to the help center. Then you can see uh, if, if, if you're, uh, so SSL, question, problem, certificate install. And then I see how to install Let's Encrypt on my domain. And when you click on it, you see exactly what you need to do. You go to the site tool, security, SSL manager. Okay. And then I already have SSNL. Can I cancel? Blah, blah, blah. You see all those related articles. If you really do get stuck and you can also not find your answer over here, you can click on contact us. Then again, you can select a topic and they want to help you automatically with all those things. Or you scroll down all the way, you click on other and I have other technical issues. And then you can select a website and then you can open a chat session or you can call with them. So I click on chat Then I need to describe. This is just a test. You guys are the best. I click on continue and then it will take a short amount of time before someone is here in the chat session. There it is already. This was just a test. Thank you for your support. 
Have a great day. I wish I had something, but everything is working. He's typing already, so this is automatic. And then this is personal from this guy. From this guy. What is he saying? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Appreciate the positive feedback. So this is really a person. It's not, of course, some things are chatbots, but this is personal. Have a great day. So you get, a, if you want to, if you want to get motivated or get a compliment, just go here and they say you're also the best. So that's how it works. Confirm. I close the chat session. I can give him five stars. Submit it. I can submit a review on a Dutch web hosting comparison website. So um, that's how you get in touch with SiteGround. And uh, I have no issue, but did you see how fast it went? I did not skip anything. It's just how fast it goes. And that's one of the big things about SiteGround that I love. Their support is amazing. They want to do their best to make it as easy as possible for you. That's what I like about SiteGround. I often get emails from people saying, hey, I messed up my website. Uh, how do I fix that? And then I say, do you have a backup? And they say, no. And I say, do your web hosting provider has a backup? They say, I don't know. Well, with SiteGround, you know that every day a backup of your website is made. So when you mess up big times, big, big time, when you update something or you change something, and you're like, oh no, I messed up. Then you can make use of one of the backups SiteGround makes for you. Let me show you how to do that. So let's talk about backups. I'm here on a different account. I created this website and I have an update for Elementor Pro. So I select Elementor Pro. I click on update plugins. Then there's the other update. I scroll down. I update the theme. And now I go to the website and maybe because I updated something it's a mess. There's an error. Well, then you need to create a backup. How can you do that? Well, let me first mess things up big time. I have a web shop over here and somehow I make a terrible mistake of going to all the products and I remove them. Bulk, move to trash, apply. Also the latest two, move to the trash. I go to the trash and somehow I don't know why, but empty the trash. And all my products are gone. I go to the website and I screw it up. Then I go to the customizer and I go to global colors and I change the colors to something really ugly and I save it accidentally. And then I change the logo. To this over here. Publish. And I'm like, what have I done? My products are gone. The colors are weird. And I have a weird logo over here. And I have no, I have no backup. Oh no, I didn't know backup yesterday or the day before. Well, no problem. Saigon got you covered. Because over here, I can go to security backups. And then I can go back to the backup of yesterday. Today it's the seventh. So a half hour ago, it's updated and the day before and the day before and the day before. I mean, it's backup, backed up. <laughs> so what I can do, I can say restore all files and database. I can also say only restore the files or only restore the database or only restore the emails. I want to restore all the files and databases. And I confirm this. So everything from an hour or no, four hours ago, will be put back because I messed up big time because I didn't update that it's not working or I removed the products accidentally. Whatever happens, SiteGround got you covered. And I get so many emails from people, 30, I messed things up. Can you help me how to get things back? And I know, then I say, where do you host your website? They say somewhere and I say, oh, I'm sorry. I hope they have a backup for you. But with SiteGround, you are covered every day they make a backup. The restoration is complete. I close this and I refresh my website and everything is back exactly as it should be. And that ladies and gentlemen is the power of SiteGround backups.
In order to enable staging on your website, go to WordPress staging. I want to go for consoledelivery.com. This changing name will be other colors or let's say brown colors. I click on create and I just want to confirm. I don't want to add additional items. I click on confirm and what will happen Everything that I will change on the staging site will not be changed on the live site. But when I decide that I want everything from the staging site to the live website, I can do that with just one click on the button. So this is great for updating plugins. See if they do not crash your website. And then we are sure it's not crashing your website. You can send the staging website to the live website. Everything will be updated seamlessly without any errors. So our brown color staging is created. I scroll down, here's brown colors. I click over here to log in on the staging website. As you see, staging two. Okay, and now I can go to the appearance customizer. I can go to the global colors. I can change them to a beautiful brown color. And then the second color also brown. Awesome. So now the website has a brown tint. I click on publish. I like it. If I would go to console delivery, it's still blue because we adjusted everything on the staging website. And now if I'm like, okay, it seems to be looking great. I can update a lot of things over here. So let's do that. Astra. Let's take a look. Is everything still working? Yes. Now I can go to site tools. Click on actions on the three dots. I say full deploy. So that means that the staging website will become the live website just with one click confirm. And now it is deployed. So this website should be available over here. If I refresh it, I refresh the page. There it is. And if I don't like it, I go back to site tools, security backups. I bring back this. Back up. The restore is complete and now it is blue again. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. In the side tools area of SiteGround, you have a lot of tools and you can also have pin tools. Maybe there are field tools you use all the time. You can pin those. So when you go to your side tools area, you see them right away. Well, let me show you how to configure that. We've been doing quite a few things already here at the side tools, but let me walk you through the side tools because uh, I think that can benefit you. So over here at our dashboard, we see an overview with our pinned tools. What we can place over here are the tools that we use a lot. If we scroll down, we see more information about how much space we use on our website, the amount of in notes, the site IP and the name servers and the statistics. Look, I have a few visitors on my brand new website. How amazing is that? And here we can view more. And here at the left, we can go through a lot of different settings. The file manager, FTP, security, backups, SSL, speed, WordPress, the domain. We've covered a few already, but let us uh, let me walk you through this overview. So here at the dashboard, we can have pin tools. So if you're using a certain tool all the time, you can edit the pin tools. You can get rid of this one, this one, this one, this one. And then we can take a look at all the other tools. So maybe you want to take a look at uh, backups all the time. Then you can pin it. If you want to install new websites all the time. You can select this one. So all the options we have over here can be placed over here at the top. And in that way you can navigate easier through all the side tools. So maybe um, I'm okay with what we have right now. Click on save. And there we go, backups and install and manage. Well, let me put it back to the way it was. Your website has two areas, actually three. It has a domain name. It has files like images, uh, PHP files, CSS files to style your website, and it has a database. The database is talking to the files and together, bam, a beautiful website pops up. Let me show you how to get access to those files and how you can get access to your database. 
In order to go to the file manager, I can click over here or I go to the site file manager. And what we see now, we see our website. And if I want to see all the files on my website, I go to public HTML. And if I double click, I see all the folders I have over here. When I use a subdomain, it will be created over here, new project. And then in that area, we have a website. Well, I can navigate by clicking here, going back to public HTML. I can collapse this, go to WP content. And in the content, we can have the plugins, the themes. So if I would go to themes over here, I see the themes I have on my website, best web hosting 23. So if I would go to my website, to the backend, to appearance themes, I see three themes, 2023, 2022, and 2021. That's what I see over here. If I go to themes, add new, and I go for the Bloxy theme, and I click on install and activate. And now I go back to the site tools file manager and I refresh the page command R on a Mac or F5 on a PC. I go back to public HTML, WP content, themes. Look at this. Now I have Bloxy. If I decide to click over here and remove the Bloxy folder, it is deleted. And now if I refresh my website, look at this. The Bloxy theme is gone. So I need to select another theme to be activated. And then it will be completely gone. So over here, I can remove folders. I can also remove files. I can edit files. So if I click here, wait, let's, let's choose a different file. Let's use the 404 PHP. If I click on edit, I can edit things over here. And then at the end I can save it. I can also click on public HTML. Let me close this public HTML. Then I can go to a file. And I can download it by clicking here. And there it goes, default.html. That's how it looks. Also here I can delete it, I can edit it. And go back to the Explorer. What I also can do, I can go to public HTML. I click on file upload. I go to my desktop and I go for this images tutorial.zip. I open it. That means that I'm uploading this file to my main root. So now I uploaded this file successfully. So I refresh the page and then here at public HTML, look at this images tutorial. So if I go to best web hosting 23.com forward slash images tutorial.zip and I hit enter. I'm downloading that. So that means that through the file manager, I uploaded that file over here and now people can download it. So now when I give this link, put it on Facebook, say, Hey, now I can download images from my computer. That's what will happen. So that's how you can use the file manager. Let's take a look at FTP accounts. Another way on how to get access to your files on your server is through FileZilla. It's a free client. Let me show you how to make use of that. With FTP, you can create a link between your computer and your web hosting provider and the server of your web hosting provider. So it can be really easy to make a backup of your website manually. But first we need to create an FTP account. So I call this one FTP at best web hosting 23. I create a password. Then I click on create. Now let me go to Zilla or search for that. And I click over here. I download it for all platforms. This one, there it goes. I open it. I drag it to the applications over here. Then I open it. I trust this. There it goes. Okay. Open it. And now look at this. Let me go to site tools and then I click over here. I want to go for the FTP credentials. Now let me make this a bit smaller. I want to log in. 
So first, the host name. I paste it. The username. And the password, which I just created. And the port is 21. Let me make this a bit bigger. I click on quick connect. I always trust this certificate. Look at this. I see those two websites. And now if I would go to my desktop, right now on my desktop, I see images tutorial and the folder images tutorial. If I drag this whole website, so I can double click and I see all the files. If I click on the three dots, I go back. If I drag this over here to the left, what will happen? This is what I see live from the server. And this is what I see on my computer. So it's really easy for me to drag things from the server to my computer and the other way around. So if I bring this up a little bit, man, I used this all the time in 2005. So here's a big file and it's bringing it from the web hosting to my computer. So if I go to my desktop, I see a complete backup of my website over here. So my copy is complete. If I go to my desktop, I see this over here. And if I would go to public HTML, then I would see images tutorial dot zip. Why? Because we have that over here at file manager public. So here I see uh, images tutorial. If I would go to FileZilla to bestwebposting 23com public HTML, and I remove it. Yes. And I refresh this page and I go to public HTML. It is gone. The images tutorial.zip. So they work together. You can manage your files over here or through FileZilla. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment is here. We're going to take a look at how we can make use of the database. It's such an important part of the tutorial. I don't use it. I have not used it for 10 years, only when I make tutorials about it. But 10 years ago, it was the way on how to make backups of your website. It's not necessary anymore. But since I want this tutorial to be complete, I want to include it in this tutorial. So let me show you how to access your database and how you can export it manually. If you want to make a backup, you can drag your complete folder over here to your computer. I just did that. And then if you want to have the database, because a website contains all the files and a database on your server. So if I want to download my database, I would need to go to site MySQL. And then here I see all the databases, one for best web hosting 23. The other one for the best web hosting forward slash new project and then the members that web hosting. So three databases. And if I want to download one, I go over here to PHP, my admin. And 10 years ago, this was the way how I made backups manually. My computer was filled with all those folders. I went to access PHP, my admin. And then I needed to check which website it was, bestwebhosting23.com. I click on it and then I would click on export SQL go. It would go there. I would show this in the finder, drag it to the desktop, then to best web hosting 23, and then it will be there. That's how you can create a manual backup. I never use this anymore. I also do not use FileZilla. I had to install this again. This is how I uh, worked with websites 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Now I don't do that anymore, but now you know how to create a manual backup using FileZilla and PHP my admin. Are you still having fun? I hope so. If you do so, or you're learning things, please like this video. I put a lot of effort in those videos, so I could appreciate the help, uh, help a like. And if you like this video and you want to learn more about making websites, I have a ton of tutorials, but feel free to subscribe. So you will be up to date when I create a new tutorial or when I publish it. Let's go to the next part. Let's talk about redirects. You can redirect your website to another website. Let me show you how. In order to redirect your website, we go to domain redirects 
and in order to keep things clean, I close this one. So only this one is open. So domain redirects. So what I can do, I can go for bestwebhosting23.com. Let me go there. Best web hosting 23.com and then there's this page hello world what i can say that this should redirect to something else so i copy this forward slash hello i can go to site tools redirects and the website best web hosting 23.com forward slash hello world needs to redirect as a 3a01 when it's uh, permanent i always use permanent if it's uh, for a certain amount of time you can do temporary Hard word. Temporary. 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 <laughs> okay. And I can redirect it to HPS ferdycorpushook.com. So I click on create and I have my first redirect. So if I refresh this page, I should go to ferdycorpushook.com. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. What else I can do? redirects and just this whole website should permanently redirect to 30 corpushook.com create okay and now when i would go to best webhosting23.com it doesn't go yet so let me go to security sorry uh speed caching dynamic cache and flush the cache. Now, if I refresh, it goes to ferdycorpshook.com. We'll talk about caching later. Uh, let's go back to redirect. So what you also see, if you want to go to your uh, webmail, you don't have to go to site tools, to email, accounts, and then log in. No, you just go to your domain name, in my case, bestwebhosting23.com forward slash webmail, hit enter. And there I go. So, and that's what you see over here at um, domain redirects. Webmail will go to the web app. So that's what you can do with domain redirects. So everything we've done so far has been done with the startup package, with the startup plan, where you can have, have only one domain, but you can have multiple domains if you go for the grow big account. So how do you upgrade your current account, your current plan to a better plan? Let me show you how you can do that. So in order to add a new domain and a new website, we need to upgrade our account. Right now, if I go to my account by clicking here and I go to websites, I see that the hosting plan, if I need to click on it, is startup. So I cannot add more domains, only subdomains, but not a new brand new domain. So I only have one domain over here. So I can go to domains, add a new domain, but I cannot link it to my current web hosting account because I only have one website with a startup plan. So what I need to do, I need to go to websites, websites. And then I see over here, bestwebhosting23.com. I click on hosting plan. Or you go to services, hosting. And then I can click on upgrade. So I can upgrade right now for two, two euros or two dollars extra per month. I click on select plan for 11 months because uh, I already have one month of startup and then I need to pay 22 euros in order to get a grow big plan. That means space for more visitors, more storage and unlimited domains that I can add to this web hosting package. So it's processing my order and it will take a few seconds. It says your order is processed. So I click on set up site and now I can add multiple domains. So I go to websites or even better services. And now I have the grow big plan. Since we have the grow big plan, we can have unlimited websites on our grow big plan. Let me show you how to add a second domain and then install WordPress on it. So now if I go to services domain, I can add a new domain. So let me add a new domain. Start typing. Well, let me create just a domain. Walter White Fan. I click on search. And it's available 18 euros or $18. I click on add. 
I don't need to have um, domain privacy. I don't need to have web hosting because I already have web hosting. I confirm and I click on pay now. I'm paying 18 euros just for this tutorial. So if I could get a thumbs up for that, thank you. Not just kidding. But if you like this tutorial, please give this video a thumbs up, a thumb, thumb, sub, thumbs up, because it will help the video to be found better. So more people can have their website and stuff. So I can set up my site. I can use an existing domain with my current uh, web hosting plan. So I, I click here and then there's Walter White fan continue. And I always like to skip this area. I can also migrate a website. We'll talk about it later. I click on skip and create empty site. Finish. And my site is created. The great thing about SiteGround again, when you uh, order a domain, you don't have to wait like with other web hosting providers. It's there immediately. And that's one of the things that I love about SiteGround. It's not only uh, website speed, but also speed in, in your whole work, in the whole way of working. You add a domain name, you buy a domain name, your first one, and you can get started right away. So now I can go to Site Tools. So with our upgraded account and our new domain, look at this. There's Walter White Fan. If I want to change it, bam, that's it. I go back, change it, Walter White Fan. I can go to WordPress or first security, SSL manager, select and uh, encrypt, get it. Okay, then I go to actions, enforce HTTPS. When you have done this a thousand times, it becomes quite easy, straightforward to do. I can uh, create a new website for a new WordPress installation. But if I would go to walterwhitefan.com, I will see that the website is live. So I can install WordPress, but how would it be if I would migrate a website from somewhere else? Well, we'll talk about it later. Right, right now, I want to go back to best web hosting 23. I always make use of WordPress, but there are different tools you can use like Joomla. In 2007, I started with Joomla. Then in 2011, I started with WordPress. Joomla, it's still available. So, and also other apps. Let me show you how to install a different application on your website. So I can install WordPress on this brand new website, but what I also can do, I can scroll down all the way. I go to devs and then to the app installer. In 2007, I started with Joomla. Over here, so I can also install Joomla, Drupal, Weebly, a PrestaShop, OpenCart, PHP Forum, a Media Wiki, Wiki website, Moodle, and other stuff. Well, I don't use it, but hey, you can. So you can install Joomla on your brand new website. So you need to fill in some information over here, and then you will install Joomla on your website. So it's not only limited to WordPress, you can also install other stuff. On your website okay let's talk about speed siteground is really fast and you can make it even faster losing using caching plugins and cdn so let me show you how we can make use of caching so when it comes to caching in order to make your website faster we need to go to speed and to caching well there are three levels the first one is ngix you can turn it on over here then we have the second one dynamic cache and it says that it works in combination with the SiteGround Optimizer plugin. Well, I have a brand new installation over here for WalterWhiteFan.com. If I go to plugins, it is installed. Here's the, the SiteGround Optimizer. And you see it also over here. We can go to the dashboard. And we can configure this by going to caching. But there's so much to talk about this plugin and there are so many options that I dedicated a separate tutorial for this. Otherwise, this tutorial becomes too long. So I want to cover everything about SiteGround, but this part, SiteGround caching using the SiteGround optimizer, I want to cover that in a different tutorial. You can watch the tutorial over here. And one thing about uh, caching, if you update something and you do not see the update in your live website, go to Site Tools, Dynamic Cache and flush the cache. Then we have memcached. We can turn it on for all sites, but we're going to talk about that in the other tutorial. You can watch it over here or go to the description or search for SiteGround Caching 30 on YouTube and you'll find my tutorial about that. Besides caching, you can also make use of CDN. Let me talk about that right now. 
The same goes for CDN. If I go to CDN, I will have a separate tutorial for it and you can find it over here or in the description of the video or you go to YouTube and search for SiteGround 30 CDN and you will find my tutorial about that. When it comes to security, we can make use of the site scanner. It's a premium function, you need to pay for it, but it's worth every penny. Let me show you how that works. The third external tutorial is about security and the site scanner. There are two versions and if you want to know all about it, click over here or go to the description or go to YouTube and search for site scanner 30. Well, the rest of the SiteGround features are included in this SiteGround tutorial. When you have the Grow Big account or the Go Geek account, you can create websites for clients and host them yourself. Then you can charge your client per month, I would say $20, $25 in, uh, in combination with some, some help and that you update all their plugins. That's a great way to make extra money because when you make $25 per month per client, you will make more than you are paying to grow your Grow Big account. Still following me? And then you can give them access to their account. Well, with the Grow Big account, you can uh, add collaborators. So all the people that can make use of all the tools in SiteGround. When you use GoGeek, you can add clients. You know what? Instead of explaining everything, let me show it to you. When I want to add a collaborator or a client to my SiteGround account, I can go back to my account. Then I go to websites. I choose the website that I want to give access to, to the client or the developer or the collaborator. In this case, WalterWhiteFan.com, and I go to all site options. Then I scroll down, and over here I want to go to users, the second tab, and I can add a collaborator. Well, the difference between a collaborator and a client is that a collaborator has more options, more access. You can read it over here to all the site tools except the email management options, and a client gets a wide label version of the site tools. So you can place your own logo there but they cannot get support from Sky, SiteGround. They need to go to you for that. And it says it's recommended if you are a reseller and you wish to give your client the site tools, not branded as SiteGround. This feature is available if you have a Go Geek plan and that makes total sense because if you have an agency with a lot of websites for clients, then the Go Geek plan is the best plan for you. I will show you both options. Let's start with the collaborator. So I click on add a user. I want to have a collaborator. If I would say client, it says I cannot do that because I need to have the Go Geek or a higher plan. Well, I go for the collaborator and I create a new user and the new user's email is ferdykorpershoek at gmail.com and his name is Josh. No, Walter. No. What is his name? I think his name is Ferdinand. I click on add and now it is pending. So what I can do, I can log out. I go to my Gmail account. I get an email from SiteGround collaboration invitation. Okay. Well, I click over here. This is my email. I need to create a password. There it is. And I need to fill in my first name, Ferdinand. Then I fill in all the information. I confirm everything and I create an account. Okay. Now I need to accept that I'm collaborating with this website. So I accept it. And now the invitation for collaboration is accepted. Now I can go to the site tools as the new user from Ferdicorps at Gmail. Hello, Ferdinand. So I did not pay anything, but now I have access to this whole area. So what I can do, I can do any, everything except creating emails. So I can go to domains, subdomains. I can create a subdomain. I can create a new WordPress website. On the subfolder, I can play around with everything, do backups, place back backups. So you can also decide that you give your clients this type of access, even though they are seen as collaborators. But you can just say, hey, I host everything. You pay a certain amount of money per month. And then, of course, you charge them big time because you can make a lot of money and squeeze their money out of their pockets into yours. Maybe this was my weirdest moment in the YouTube history of Freddy Korpshoek. Maybe not, but um, I just leave it in. So this is what you can do, but there is something else you can do. Right now I use a GoGeek or even cloud hosting. I can go to all site options, users. I can add a user. This time it's a client. 
I can create a new user, Ferdy Corpusuk at gmail.com. And his name is Ferdinand. And the client role is default or a new role. And then I can show them what kind of access they should have. So their role name is client. And they can have access to, don't have access to the FTP. No, no, no. They can only work with the backups. Let's do that. I turn this all off. I add them. Now I need to send the login details to my client. So I can copy them to the clipboard. And I can send it to them. So I send it to um, to 30 at affiliate marketing course access. Then I get an email over here. So I click on this link. Okay. Now I need to create a password and I click on submit my username. I got it in my email. It's my, uh, it is my email, my password. Look at this. Now I have access over here only to backups because that's the only area I gave them access to. And now I, as I can say, I'm the client, I can say, Hey, I messed up. I will bring back an update from earlier. So that's what you can do if you have the go geek account and you want to work with clients and give them access and then you can charge them per month for web hosting. When you have your websites at SiteGround, you can see the statistics. How many visitors do you have? How many page views do you have? Where do they come from? From which country? What kind of internet browser do they use? Uh, what other platforms they're using? Is the PC or a Mac or an iPhone? Let me show you how to check those statistics. Over here, I'm at my website, ferdicorpsu.com at the site to area. And if I scroll down here at the dashboard, I can see the amount of visitors. So yesterday I had 460 and I, here I see unique visitors and here I see page view. So those three and a half thousand visitors this month went through 19,000 pages. And I can see the statistics over here and I can click on a few more and I can see more. I can see it in the chart or in a table amount of page views, the brand width. The average number of pages per visit, five, six, the brand width per day. So those are some basic statistics. I can go to audience countries, United States, the Netherlands, India, United Kingdom. I can also see this in the table view. I can also take a look at different months. I can say in January, the Netherlands was even more popular than the United States. I can go to sources. Where do they come from? From Google, from YouTube, from Bing, DuckDuckGo. I can select search engines. I can also select referrals, which website is uh, giving me the most traffic. And there's my daughter again. She's crying. And she's taken care of by my wife. So nothing to worry about. Then I have behavior. Where do people go? And then I can go to uh, most visitors files, visitors files per page. Wow. And I can go to technology, the browsers. So a lot of people are using Chrome, 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 other Firefox, Firefox, Safari, Safari, and Safari. And operating systems, Windows, Mac, Android, Windows, Linux, iOS, phone, Etc. You also see it over here. So that's it uh, for traffic. I would definitely uh, advise you to go with Google Analytics. You can have more information about your visitors, where they come from, where they go to, about their history, who they've been dating. No, not that, but um, okay. And if I want to see it for a different website, I just change it. And then I see it over here how many visitors and all the same stuff. So that's it for statistics. What you can also do at SiteGround is having an external domain somewhere else, not at SiteGround, but still host your website at SiteGround. Let me show you how to do that. 
So over here, I have my Grow Big account with my Walter White Fan website. But I want to add an external domain to my current web hosting package. How can I do that? I go back to my account. And by the way, the website is rodrigosilva.com. It's a domain from a Dutch um, domain provider. And it says it's hosted here at my domain. So I go to websites, new website. I copy this. I want to point it towards the web hosting of SiteGround. So I want to websites, new website, and then I want to choose an existing domain. And I copy or paste domain, rodrigosilva.com. I click on continue. Okay. Then I click on skip and create a website. Then I click on finish. And my website is created. What I need to do now, I need to point those to DNS codes or name servers to my domain. So the domain is active. I click on manage. Then I go to name servers or DNS. Let me check name servers. Okay. What I will do over here. I click on edit and I paste the first one. Then I go to the second one, copy and paste it here. I save it. I save it. I remove this one and I click on update. Great. So now this domain will point to the name servers of SiteGround. So I don't know how long it will take. Look at this. I refresh soon, this will be live. It's now an hour later. And when I go to Rodrigo Silva, look at this. Awesome. The link is working. So now it's not secure. What I can do, I can go to the site tools. So keep in mind, this domain is external. It's from a different web hosting provider or a domain provider, but it's hosting at SiteGround. And I showed you step-by-step -step how to do that. I need to go to security. SSL manager, by the way, I'm really excited. <laughs> I hope you're too. I, uh, it's already encrypted, so that's great. Then I can go over here to actions and force HTTPS, turn it on. Now I go to WordPress, install, manage, select, and uh, install WordPress. So let me do that. And then Install WordPress. And now if I view the site rodricosilva.com, it's safe and it is installed with WordPress while I use a domain from somewhere else. So that's what you can do. In order to transfer a domain from your current web hosting provider or domain provider to SiteGround, you need to go to your current domain holder or domain provider, however you want to call that. Mine is this Dutch one and I want to go for Rodrigo Goose. So I click on the options. I go to manage and I want to ask for an, an EPP code. So I click over here. They want to know why are you leaving us? And I just uh, say something and I say, I want to activate the transfer. So when I do that, I'll get a code. It will be sent to my email and that code can be used to get the domain on your new web hosting provider, in my case, SiteGround. So there it is. Here is my code and here's the domain name. So let me first copy the domain name before I make an error. I copy this. I go to SiteGround websites or services even better, domains. And I want to transfer a domain. I click over here. This domain I want to transfer. Get rid of all the slashes and stuff, HTTPS. I click on check status. Okay, and now it says you need to fill in your code. So I go back to my email and I copy this code. I place it over here. I scroll down, all my information is correct. I don't want to have domain privacy this time. I confirm everything and I click on pay now. 
and it says your order has been placed. You can follow your domain transfer process at client area services domain page. Please check your email. So I get an email when the transfer is completed. So I go back to my domains. Great. So now I just need to wait. And when it is there, I go to websites, new website. I choose an existing domain name and then I can select the domain over here. So uh, we'll come back to that. Another great feature within SiteGround is migrating your current website that is located, hosted somewhere else on SiteGround. Let me show you how to do that. Now, in order to migrate a website, I want to tell you upfront that it's not migrating a domain. It's not migrating the emails on your old web hosting provider. It is just about the website. So we can do it through a few ways. I can go to WalterWhiteFan.com to the site tools. Then I go to WordPress Migrator and I choose this domain and I click on Generate. And now I have a migration token for WalterWhiteFan.com and I can work that way. Or I go back to my account to Websites, New Website. Then I can choose a new domain. If I have a new domain, I can buy it over here. So I select it or an existing domain. Well, if I've transferred for domain, for instance, I can select it over here or a, a temporary domain. So in this uh, case, I will do a temporary domain just to show you the process in order to migrate a website. And I'll also show you another way on how to do it. So I click on temporary domain and this is my domain. It's free. I click on continue. And I want to migrate a website. So I click on migrate website and then I want to make use of the super fast WordPress auto migration plugin. So I click on select and I continue. I don't need to have the site scanner. So I click on finish. So my website will be created. Okay. It says I'm all set. I download the plugin. There it goes. I copy this migration token. Now I go to the website I want to transfer. So I go to plugins, add new, upload plugin, drag it over here. Then I click on install now and I activate the plugin. Okay. Now I go to the left area to SiteGround migrator. I fill in the migration token and my email. And I start the migration. So what it will do, it will copy this complete website and transfer it to my new temporary domain. Start migration. Site domain to be changed. Yes, to this one, I click on continue. Okay, the transfer is complete. I get an email. If I have, or if you have an external domain name, you need to use these, those name servers. I've shown you before in the tutorial how to do that. So your new website will point to the brand new web hosting you have over here. So now I can go to the site tools. And if I take a look at WordPress, install and manage over here, I have my temporary domain. And if I take a look at it, I will see the brand new website from Console delivery. Check everything. So that's how you can migrate your website to SiteGround. If you want to know how to do that with emails and stuff, you can go to YouTube. The tutorial is a little bit old, but it's still working. And then how to copy emails SiteGround. Transfer your complete WordPress website and emails to a new web hosting provider. It's already five years old. I, I used a really cool, I used a really cool green screen and then everybody started doing it and I was like, okay, I'll quit because you know, no, I just liked uh, using the green screen, but it's a lot of work, but I show you how to back up your emails, then get your um, whole website transferred and then add those emails to your brand new web hosting provider with the same domain name. So. That's uh, how you can learn how to do that by watching this video. Maybe I should make a new video. So that's the way the cookie crumbles. In some cases, it can be that you want to cancel your domain. Maybe you don't want to use it anymore or you want to cancel your web hosting account because you, you, you quit your company. I don't know.
But if you want to do that, let me show you how to cancel your domain and how to cancel your web hosting account. If you want to cancel a domain or your web hosting account, how can you do that? Okay, what I need to do, I need to go to services. Okay, uh, domains. And then I go for Walter White Fan, manage. I can renew it or I can click over here. Renewal settings, turn it off. So my service will expire November 9, 2023. So if I do nothing, my domain will be gone in a year. That's how you can do that with domains. And then for the remaining time, you can use it. With hosting, click on services, hosting. Uh, click on manage. Also here, you can upgrade or you can click over here. Downgrade or cancel. And then you can say at once or at expiration. So in a year. And then you need to follow the steps and you can quit your account. Sometimes people hide it. And it's hard to find, so I want to include it in the tutorial. I hope you don't cancel. I think SiteGround is the best, but I want to make the tutorial as complete as possible. We covered a lot already. There are a few more things I want to point out to you, show you how they work. I personally do not use them, but I want this tutorial to be complete. So let me walk you through them. A few more things you can do with SiteGround. So let's take a look at protected URLs. You can protect any URL on your website. So I go to security protected URLs. And for instance, I have this shooting game gun controller for the switch, the Nintendo switch. And this is the link. So I can grab this link, this URL, go to site tools and then select the path. Make sure there's only one forward slash. So I can say that console delivery.com forward slash this path is only for this user. And that user is 30 and this is the password. Now I click on protect and now it is protected. So if I refresh the page, it says, Hey, you need to sign in for this. So I need to sign in with 30, the password, I click on sign in and now I have access to that page. So you can assign specific access to specific pages. What else? We go back to the site tools and I can block traffic. So I click here at security blocked traffic. And maybe you have an ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend and you have a blog about your current girlfriend, how amazing your life is and you're vlogging about it and blogging about it. So somehow we can find out what the IP is of your ex and then you can fill in the IP address over here. And then when you click on block, he or she has no access to your website anymore. And then over here you can manage the blocked IPs. You can also block complete countries. So I can go to block countries. I can say everybody from Aruba cannot access my website. So on those levels, you can block traffic. Then we can go to WordPress, auto update. And I select console delivery.com. What I can do, I can have auto update settings and it's recommended. So every 24 hours, there will be checked if there is a new release of WordPress. For instance, WordPress 6.2, that's a major release. A minor release is WordPress 6.1.1, those will be updated immediately. And I can also check that I want to auto update plugins. So by default, it's enabled. And if something goes wrong, then you can go to the backups and place back one of your backups. I have this turned on and then sometimes I get an email like your website is updated to this and this version. And the more up to date your plugins or your WordPress version is, the safer it is. So I highly suggest you leave those settings as they are. Then we can go to search and replace and throughout the whole website, we can change things. So I go to the website console delivery. And I want to change shooting game to something else. So I search the string and I change it to farting game. Now I click on search and replace. And it says it was replaced. So now I refresh the page. And now it says farting game gun controller. <laughs> so uh, that's what you can do a simple way to search and replace things on the whole website. Okay, one more thing, go to developers to the PHP manager. Right now it's on automatic. And sometimes uh, SiteGround waits with the most up-to-date version of PHP because it's not stable. 
But it can be that you install a plugin and says, hey, you need to have PHP 8 for that. Well, right now we have PHP 7.4 and it says your PHP version is updated automatically. But if you want to change it to manual, you click over here, you change it to change PHP version manually, and then I can bring it to 8 or to the one the plugin requires. And then I can confirm it and then check out if everything is still working. Well, that seems to be the case, but I highly suggest you only do this when the plugin is asking for it. I rather change it to manage PHP because SiteGround knows what they are doing. So that wraps it up. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you learn a ton of stuff. If I've not covered anything or something that you would like to learn, let me know in the comments. I want this tutorial to be as complete as possible. And I'll do my best to help you by giving you an answer or by creating uh, an extra part, uh, an extra tutorial for that. So please like this video, feel free to subscribe, and then you'll see me in the next video. Bye-bye.